Mark chapter 13, verse 1. Must be read very carefully again, because with this and Matthew, the, the church and the Christians get overly, especially Matthew 24, they get overly excited and something that's not them. So as he went out of the temple, there is no temple today. The temple was destroyed in 70 A.D. or A.D. 70 by Titus. One of the disciples said unto him, we don't know which one, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And that's what the Christians say. See our building? See how great our building is? See how wonderful our church is? And I've heard preachers say when they get invited to a church, and the very first thing is, you know, you gotta, you got to come see a church building. We came into Florida like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and they had to drive us to see their church, which was a storefront. And we walked in there like, okay, me, I'm like, can we get to the hotel so I go to sleep? It's a storefront. Got chairs, it's got an altar and a piano over there, and a bathroom. And what we do, Kaka. And Jesus answering, say unto them, Sayest thou these great buildings? And the temple was great, it was superb, said Jesus. There shall not be one, there not left one stone upon another. That shall not be thrown down. And the temple is destroyed since A.D. 70. That prophecy has happened. And as he sat upon Mount Oliver. Page divider. And they call it the Ovalet Disclosure. You know. Ooh. How about this? The Mountain of Olive. I'm just in here getting my page thing. Um, Mountain of Olive sermon, Mountain of Olive talk. I mean, disclosure, all of it. <laughs> Over against the temple. Peter, James, and John, the three, and Andrew asked him privately, or privately, alone, no one else around. Peter, James, and John, and Andrew are Jewish. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the signs? 1 Corinthians. Stop right there and mark this down. 1 Corinthians 1, 22. Oop, I get the four. 1, 22. For the Jews require a sign, the nation of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Greeks, the heathen that are not Jews, seek after wisdom. Jews are the foundation and the building block of the Jewish Hebrew people, never the Gentiles. Back to Mark. So Peter, James, and John, and Andrew are asking a Jewish question to a Jewish Messiah who is Jewish. We want to know about the sign. And the church today, what's the church today? What's the church? Sign of the time, sign of the time, sign of the time. I'm not looking for a sign. I'm listening for a trumpet. Don't you know that this thing over here is happening, that thing over there is happening, this is happening, that's happening, this. Well, you know, don't you believe the signs? No, I don't. Not for Gentiles. When all these things shall be fulfilled. And Jesus answered, began to say, take heed. Now the first thing he says is that any man deceive you. He's talking to Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Very first thing is, there's going to be a lot of people out there 
who will be deceivers and deceiving. But that happens in the church age. That happens today. And Jesus said it would. When he shall hear of wars and rumors of war, we just had this, this you know, Russia and Czechoslovakia and China and Well, Jesus said to you would hear of wars and rumors of wars, newspapers. Be not troubled. Why are the Christians troubled? Why is the world troubled when Jesus said it? For such things must needs be. But the end, which is never a reference to the rapture, which is found in most many places in the book of Daniel, shall not be yet. What's the end? The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are many Christians out there who are confused. They will inspire to, to say the second coming of Jesus, referencing their, their thoughts and ideas to the rapture, and the rapture is not the second coming of Jesus. I had to correct somebody the other day. We go up in the rapture to Jesus. Jesus doesn't come down, rapture. Jesus will come down and touch the earth and we will be following him at the second coming. For nation shall rise against nation. That's happened throughout all the ages. Kingdom against kingdom. There shall be earthquakes in diverse places. There shall be famines and troubles and these are the beginnings of sorrow. Well, the beginnings of sorrows was back in Genesis 3. God told Eve, you're going to sorrow. God told Adam, you're going to sorrow. And since then, there have been earthquakes, there have been famines, there have been death, diseases. And you're going to find more in the earth. And the more that man sins, nature seems to explode. God seems to send out his judgments upon sin. But take heed to yourself. Peter, James, John, Andrew. Not talking to the church. Verse 3. Peter, James, John, and Andrew. Nobody else. They're talking privily. For they, sh for they shall deliver you, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew. To consoles. We are now in the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And the Acts of the Apostles comes for about 33, AD, AD 33 to AD 90. And some would even go far as AD 120. I'm not mu that much of a timepiece to know right and wrong. And throughout the book of Acts, they are put to councils. Well, we'll see John and Peter put before councils. Now, once Paul comes in the picture, we don't really hear what's going on with John and Peter. But Paul, through the Jews in Asia, is put before councils, put before judges. And in the synagogues he shall be beaten. Alright, that's the book of Acts. Paul was beaten three times. Peter and John were beaten 
once as recorded. Guaranteed that wasn't the only time. I guarantee there were others. Now, many of your Christians today are beaten. Many of your Christians are brought before the law. But very few are in the synagogues. We have laws and, and, and ordinances in America is we cannot go on private property and preach. And if you do, you're violating the law. They were allowed to go to the synagogue. Paul would go to a synagogue. He would listen to him preach. And they would say, anybody got anything to say? Paul would raise his hand and then he would preach in the synagogue. And it would cause to be beaten. It would be caused to be exiled. You took a beating for the preaching. You shall be brought before rulers, Paul, James and John before the Sanhedrin, kings, Paul, for my sake, for a testimony against them. And not many kings are living around today. It makes you wonder what's going to happen with England. England has a king now. But we're not talking about today. We're not talking about the church age. The gospel must first be published among all nations. And how many times have you heard this? The gospel's got to go all the way around the world. Did the gospel go all the way around the world in the book of Acts? Of the apostles. It went around all the known world of 33 AD 33 to AD 90 or AD 120. But the Native Americans were really not that known. Not to say that the Word of God did not cross over, but as far as the act of the apostles, know that I'm saying it completely. The known world. All nations. It doesn't say the world. If it's subject to Peter, James, and John, the apostles. Andrew went out. Peter went out. John stayed in Jerusalem. That's why I think the, the, the epistles of John is John of Peter, James, and John. Not the brother of Jesus. He, if he went out, he, he went out. John was the, the, the presiding elder of the church in Jerusalem. And they would tell the Jews in Jerusalem, and, and, and Jesus said, Jerusalem, Samaria, and the outer parts of the world. This is to what Jesus said. And yes, today the, the, the Bible's getting out all nations. Well, yeah, the Bible would get out, or the scriptures in Jesus, the death, burial, and resurrection would reach out to, to, to the, the realm of, of China, your spice market. Paul would go into shipping and then go into the shipping ports and preach. Ephesus and uh, Thessalonica are shipping points. And from there, sailors would get on their ships and say, do you know what I heard? I heard this Jew, before we set sail, speak about this Jesus, and I put my faith and trust in this Jesus on this ship of his men. And hopefully that ship, when they went into a port, 
You're not talking about America. You can't put America in the Bible. But when they shall lead you, that means they bring you and deliver you up the book of Acts. Take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Don't sit in prison and think about what you're going to say. Don't call for a lawyer. Don't proclaim you got rights like American would. He says, don't premeditate. Neither do ye premeditate. Don't think, when you're sitting in jail and you know you're going before the magistrate, just, just rest. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, when you stand before the magistrate, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is going to overpower your tongue. Oh, forgive me. And the Holy Spirit is what's going to give you the mouth to speak to the people. Now remember, they don't have 66 books. It is not written in the book of Acts. What is written in the book of Acts is being lived. <laughs> Peter can't say, well, hold on. Let me see what I'm going to do. Okay, Acts chapter 4. No. Notice how it doesn't say, you know, open up the book and chapter. No, they're relying 100% on the Holy Ghost because there is no written word of God starting with the book of Acts of the Apostles. Today, and you figure at least, I forget what they said, the, John is the latest. You would figure at least AD 120 and be written down. Now, they would not have a complete Bible yet. Now, the brother shall betray the brother to death. The Jewish brother will turn in his Jewish brother. And one of the things would happen was they would kill you. Stephen. Stephen was a Jew. He accepted he the Sanhedrin. To being stoned to death. Brother would be. Stephen was Jewish. And they were Jewish. Father to son. Now if you put your faith and trust in Jesus. Leave it down there. You would be. Put into a mock funeral. By your family. You would be considered dead. You would be thrown out of your house. That would be considered death. So when Paul takes up and has a collection for the saints there in Jerusalem, it's because there is no money for the Christians, or they weren't called Christians yet, but for the, the people of Jesus in Jerusalem because they have no more jobs, they have no more livelihood, they have no more houses. It got to the point that even the priests, I'm trying to think which one. Um, I can't think of his name right now. But it, one of the well-known men in the Bible, he was a priest, sold all his possessions in Jerusalem, gave it up for the church, because you know what? I can't do nothing here because I am a Jew that believes in Jesus and that was taboo. Today, to bring it up today, they, and the Jews had back then, they would have a candle in the window for their children that went out on their own. Then they would blow that candle out if that child trusted Jesus. Today they would unplug it. My child no more lives. My child's dead. Don't speak about him. Well, you're very close to, I mean, Americans don't even know what that is. Children shall rise up against their parents. Well, that's happening today. But it's Jewish. 
which is prescribed in the law is the child is to honor his father and mother. So what you're doing is you're breaking the laws. Where you can be set from the law by putting your faith and trust in this Jesus that you know that died on that cross and was rose again. And shall cause them to be put to death. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. And then when they were called Christians in Antioch, as we call ourselves Christians, he said, we'll be there, well, right, a Christian. It was in condemnation name. Oh, you're following that man. And it was rude. It was to be crude to be called a Christian. And it has been reversed. You can be in America a well-lived, well-versed, a person of conviction. You can be hated by Christians in a church. And sorry to say, you can be loved by your co-workers. Your co-workers say, man, that's a good worker. Look how well he does and all that. He's a great help to the company. He's a great help to the team. Wow. And church hates you. Says all oh, men. Now here is a particular expression. It's not church age. But he that shall endure unto the end. That is never church salvation. The same shall be saved. Hey, listen, I'm saved, and this would be closed at Acts 9, 10, and 11. The Ethiopian eunuch said, Acts chapter 8, I believe this man named Jesus. And he was baptized, and he was saved. What are you going to do before this? When you got the dying thief on the cross, he put his faith and trust in Jesus. No church, no tithing, no fellowship, no baptism. And he did witness to the other dying thief. He witnessed the gospel, the death, burial, and he believed that Jesus was going to come alive again. The resurrection that your typical church don't do today. The end, which we have already read, he that endures to the end. And Jesus said, to these things come in the end. Shall not be. The end is the end now of the tribulation period. When Jesus is about to come. If you can endure the three and a half years tribulation, three and a half years we're going to get in a moment, moment, of the great tribulation. If you are still alive. And you are a Jew. In Jacob's trouble. You are still alive. When Jesus comes. Like Ahab and her family. When Jericho was destroyed. Because the only one. I know she was Gentile. The only ones in Jericho. That came out with Israel. Is everyone that was in Rahab's house. If Rahab had a second uncle. And he wasn't in the house. He was picking up sticks. He would have been dead. Never. Enduring the end shall be saved. Never is that applied to a Christian. And you can't read. Revelation, I mean, excuse me, you can't read Mark 13, override verse 13, and apply it to today. You cannot. Without doing harm to verse 13. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, and was spoken by Daniel the prophet, and when you read the book of Daniel, the, ab the abomination of desolation is the Antichrist 
seated in the most holy place or standing in the mo most holy place. Well, my friend, from A.D. 70, there is no temple. There is no most holy place. That cannot be the church age. It has to be a period of time with Daniel's dating three and a half years of tribulation. It's going to be revealed to the Jews, open up, that in that most holy place is not a priest, but the Antichrist. And that's for Jews. The time of Jacob's trouble. Spoken by Daniel the prophet. Standing, standing, standing where he ought not. You didn't see you didn't sit. Like Eli did. Eli was sitting. Let him that readeth understand. Now there will be more understanding coming. How? The book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. The book of Revelation of Jesus Christ not yet written and the book of Daniel will go hand in hand. And let them that be in Judea flee to the mountains. Again, we're going to stop there. We'll pick up this verse again. That's Jewish. I know they're playing they're playing the Gentiles and you know they're or the African persuasion, they're, you know, the African Jews. I don't care what you call yourself. You're not of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're not Jewish. 